We've got Paul Joseph Watson at the bottom of the hour. And I read the special report that uh, he put together with some of my notes that were added to it. That's why it's Paul Watson and Alex Jones. And uh, I just called him up about 10 minutes ago and I said, please add some of these hardcore points to the article that we have sources that said we need to go check out Google's connection to Bilderberg years ago. And those same sources said, hey, this is a special meeting going on. You need to go check out the Grove Hotel northwest of London because something big is happening there. And then Watson stumbled with uh, our InfoWars auxiliary reporter with him into the middle of something very big and got a lot of key data from multiple high-level people there at the meeting because they think the public's so stupid, they're hiding this in plain view. Guard shacks being built, Google people scurrying around. Uh, Google starts meeting there next week. This is where they met to plan the Arab Spring. That's now been admitted. They were bragging about that. And, and, and the torch is being passed by David Rockefeller and others to Schmidt of Google. And they're moving totally the, to the technocracy. So this is a big deal. Uh, this is, uh, really adds to the years of research we've done on Bilderberg intensely for the last decade and, and tracking him to Switzerland and documenting a bunch of Google execs, including Schmidt there, uh, leading some of the meetings uh, inside. All of this information coming up today with Paul Joseph Watson at the bottom of the hour. And then Catherine Albrecht, Dr. Catherine Albrecht, technology expert, uh, consumer advocate, uh, she is going to be joining us to talk about Google. I set her up last week, but basically canceled her, had her on for like 10 minutes instead of an hour because of Benghazi Gate on Thursday, moving her to this week to talk about Google. And sure, we know Google's big. We know that they want to be the internet. We know that they're dominating on so many fronts, but do we really understand it is to be the technocracy, the digital skin? It's the group allowed to break into your computer without warrants and steal all your data. It's the group uh, sharing all of your data. It's the group created by the CIA and National Security Agency. It will absorb the old real web, the organic web, and force you onto its controlled web. That's part of Internet 2 plan. Oh, you can be on the old internet that's falling apart and shut down, but Google won't let you access Internet 2, run by them and the government globally, governments with a hundred times faster internet. That's what they're designing. That's what they're setting up. That's what they're rolling out. So, bottom of the hour, Googleberg. This is the most important meeting of Bilderberg in its 60-plus years since they first met in 19... 54 officially and that too had a bunch of lead up meetings meetings during and meetings after this is a mega jumbo realigning metamorphosis technocratic meeting and at the meeting they have a sculpture of a human skeleton being absorbed by a computer that photo is up on infowars.com the article is red linked googleberg google Merges with Bilderberg, Googleberg, Google, taking over the planet. Googleberg, global elite, transforms itself from into technocratic revolution. Googleberg, global elite, transforms itself for technocratic, technotronic, technocratic revolution. Authoritarian, anti-democratic power networks are being rebranded as trendy, philanthropic style groups. And again, Watson has been working on this article uh, four days. Uh, we'll be right back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. 
When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. It is the 13th day of May 2013. We are going to be here for the next three hours. Uh, we have big breaking uh, Bilderberg slash Google global governance news. Uh, we have Bill Gates, who frequently attends Bilderberg, but also uh, the uh, head of Google, Eric Schmidt, uh, also has been videotaped uh, attending, as well as Zuckerberg, the head of Facebook, planning that pump and dump two years ago in Switzerland uh, with the stock. But from our sources and on the ground confirmation, we have confirmed that Google is basically running Bilderberg 2013 and meeting several weeks in advance at the same hotel where Project X of the OSS was run during World War II. Now, why do globalists not meet at government compounds? Because that could be under surveillance. Government people uh, could blow the whistle. When you have these criminal networks meeting, they do it outside of government, but use local police as their security force. And the mayor of the local town of Watford, northwest of London, uh, it's an elitist area, has come out and said, oh, horrible protesters, I'm sure they'll be violent, horrible people. I've got our quotes here in the paper. But I still feel honored that we're prestigious enough to host this Bilderberg Group conference. So she's saying it's prestigious, horrible rabble coming to protest it. She hopes they can be stopped. Wadford Mayor Bilderberg protesters can and do cause violence and disturbance. And that's the actual quote. And then she goes on to say, oh, thank goodness we're, we're prestigious enough venue. It's, quote, very good. The Grove has been deemed a prestigious enough uh, venue for us to be able to uh, host it, oh, but it's horrible that vicious people from all over the world are going to be traveling here uh, as as royalty and, and world leaders meet in secret with robber barons, carving up the world. Oh, it's so terrible that anyone, that an alternative press dare cover it. So see, she's in a local paper going, oh, yeah, you know, global government's coming here to meet in town, horrible rabble. I guess she didn't get the memo. Bilderberg Group doesn't exist, the New York Times says. When I covered it five years ago when no one could find Obama in D.C. with Hillary, we knew they were there. Secret Service came in. We confirmed we were there. I called the press, the mainstream press, and they said, we're not coming to that. The Epoch Times covered it, and that was it. And so uh, the New York Times a year later came out and said, oh, there's a film about it called New World Order. Alex Jones was in a, in, in a hotel uh, parking lot imagining global elite were meeting. Imagine, he imagined there were two billion bullets. He imagined the IRS was persecuting Tea Party groups and Patriot groups. He imagined government documents four years ago given to him by state police and federal marshals more than eight different documents where they said returning veterans, gun owners, libertarians, conservatives would be the new terror threat, not Al-Qaeda. Of course, it all turned out to be real documents, and it's now mainstream news. I imagined it all. I imagined the sun came up this morning. So Paul Watson uh, is going to be uh, joining us, and we're going to be breaking down the biggest developments in Bilderberg's official history since 1954. Oh, and I'm afraid that even if corporate dinosaur media doesn't cover it here in the United States, I'm afraid it will end up getting covered. Oh, I'm afraid so. And that will only hurt your credibility that much worse. So please do what you always do and be conceited, be arrogant, and, and treat your readers and your viewers like they're morons, Piers Morgan and Rachel Maddow, and watch your audiences dwindle by the week. Rachel, your audience was 800,000 a year ago. 
it's 400,000 now. Oh, just a year ago, Piers Morgan, your audience was a million. Now it's 400,000 trending to be 300,000 in a month at the current plunge rate. Oh, you're hemorrhaging out. But it kind of feels good, though, there in the last minutes politically of your, of your waning star. Because the endorphins flow and you kind of enter a, 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 a type of rapture politically as you die politically. It's like roaches. If you spray them with poison, they run around euphorically for a few seconds before flopping on their backs. <laughs> oh, Piers Morgan hopes for CNN talk show to rebound like a dead cat bounce after getting beaten up in the ratings. It was like an explosion when I went on his show January 7th. You know, suddenly, 2 million viewers. We only had about 600,000 then. Again, a few months before that, a million. And it exploded, and for about a week or so, he had a million, and then 800,000, 700,000, 600,000, 500,000, 400,000. It was like an explosion. Like he was an attack frigate orbiting above our city, and we, we blasted it with heavy guns, and it exploded. Everyone looked, look at the, oh, he's big. Piers Morgan is big. He's big again. <laughs> As he exploded. <laughs> oh, and then they declared their victory over us in the dying dinosaur media. They declared their victory and, and, and danced in an imaginary victory dance, spiking the football in the end zone as they burned. Ah, oh, there'll be more fireworks for these people. But listen, the, you know, the, the globalists are capable of staging a big terror attack and bringing in martial law. They're capable of launching a big war. They didn't get into power because they weren't willing to do desperate things and weren't bold. So they could release a bioweapon and pose as saviors and use the martial law clampdown. All the stuff they've put in place is so they can clamp down if we ever start defeating them. As Zbigny Brzezinski has said, as Hillary Clinton has said, they're losing the info war. And what are they going to do as we kamikaze into them politically, like an X-wing going into the main deck of the Executor Star Destroyer? Total nerd analogy. Total nerd allegory. <laughs> and And... That's the secret. Fortune favors the bold. Our fortune is not eating GMO. Our fortune is having national sovereignty. Our fortune is, in, is energizing families and men and women and children to have success. That's the fortune we seek, not dumb the whole world down and cut off resources so you eugenicists can play God. By the way, uh, it's in mainstream news, and I'm going to get into all the other big, big news on the IRS targeting tea parties. This could be bigger than Benghazi, Benghazi continuing to melt down. Uh, I mean, this is a real, this is what a coup d'etat or a counter coup in the establishment looks like against Obama. And again, it's not because the establishment wants to give us a victory this is happening. It's because they know that they've committed and accelerated their program too fast and even sectors of the establishment are scared of Obama and the hardcore technocrats because the hardcore technocrats hate humanity so much and are such psychopathic control freaks that large sectors of the establishment realize, oh my God, this isn't business as usual, keeping the masses down and centralizing control. This really is a crazy eugenics plan to bring in world government and exterminate 80 plus percent of the population. And they also see how France and other European countries are about 10 years ahead of the United States and England in the globalist takeover. And they see how even billionaires are being arrested and having their stolen wealth stolen by other globalists. And so they're figuring out, oh my gosh, when we get rid of checks and balances, oh my gosh, when we get rid of, of, of any type of due process, we're going to be the first people up on the chomping block. You could have two globalists left on Earth in a palace a technotronic, technocratic palace, and they would try to kill each other. It is the nature of these people. And so there is a worldwide battle for the heart and soul of humanity going on, and it's happening all over the planet. It's happening in communist China. It's happening in authoritarian Israel. 
It's happening in authoritarian Saudi Arabia. It's happening in authoritarian England. It's happening in authoritarian United States of America. And you are the resistance. Oh, by the way, I'm going to do a report on this on the nightly news tonight, or perhaps the third hour if I have time, because Richard Belzer's coming up, Catherine Albrecht on, into Google, Paul Watson. But look at this. Rich cabals meet about overpopulation. Document cam, please, for TV viewers. And you see the original ABC News article from 2009. And it says, by Russell Goldman, meeting of America's riches uh, about need, attendees say. But the original headline, and they changed it, was, that's out of the Times of London. I want you guys to print me this. Billionaire Club in Bid to curb overpopulation. And they actually let the Times of London, ABC News, by the way, both these groups were sponsored at the time by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They let them into the meeting and they actually came out and said, oh, the plan is not to be the world government. That's already established. It says that at the end of this Times of London article, the plan is to be advisors to the global government on how to reduce population. Bill and Melinda Gates... Warren Buffett, Schmidt, uh, Oprah Winfrey, you name it. And now they're meeting again. Here's the new article out of News 13, WCBD. Bill Gates, Jeb Bush, Oprah, and Warren Buffett meet in South Carolina Island. And they say it's guest to discuss overpopulation. Secret Billionaire Club seeks population control. That's World Net Daily. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, you name it. And the globalists have been going after gardening. They've been harassing people that have gardens in their front yards or their backyards. They've called for licenses for people to have gardens because you can't trust prisoners in the police state America to be able to grow their own food. That's why I've come to the realization that we need to become self-sufficient. You need to be informed. You need to have the Second Amendment to protect yourself. You need to be politically active to wake up others. You need to filter your water but you also need to plant a garden. Even if you live in an apartment, you can do this. If you live in the countryside, obviously you can do it on a grand scale. There are so many green belts in areas uh, that humans don't even visit uh, nearby cities and in suburbs where people are now more and more planting their own little private gardens and meadows and off the side of the road. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest of times. The ARC All-in-One Seed Kit contains 70 varieties of 50,000 seeds of fruits, vegetables, medicinal, and culinary herbs. All ARC seeds are heirloom. Each type is labeled and sealed separately for ease of use and longevity. The Deluxe Emergency Seed Bank combines three of Emergency Seed Bank's top sellers, the Family Survival Emergency Seed Bank, the Medicinal Herb Seeds Pack, and the Culinary Herb Seeds Pack. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, and medicinal herbs and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. A little seed can grow a huge tree that produces fruit for up to 50 years. We have the best life bombs. That's what these are. We have the best weapons against death out there at the lowest prices waiting for you to lovingly plant them and lovingly grow them and lovingly eat them and share them with others. We will strike back against the New World Order and this is only one more initiative in our fight against them. So please join us at InfoWarsShop.com or you can link through at InfoWars.com at the InfoWars Seed Center. 
Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is undoubtedly the biggest news since Bilderberg's founding back in 1954. Of course, it was secret in the mainstream press to the last decade. It's still quasi-secret. The media alternately says it doesn't exist or you're, you're insane if you protest it, uh, that it does exist, but that world elites should be able to meet in secret with your elected politicians uh, who will then um, sign over your assets to them. But here's the headline, Googleberg, global elite transforms itself for technocratic revolution. Incredibly important article by Paul Joseph Watson uh, at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. He's joining us in the next segment. And then in the next hour with Catherine Albrecht, I'm going to talk about what the technocrats like Google and Apple, but, but Google's the key, are doing with all the data they have on you. Now, you notice suddenly they're on CNN going, it's for your best interest. Everything you do for a decade has been recorded. We can go back and listen to any of it. You are guilty until proven innocent. And even when you're proven innocent, we continue to spy on you without warrants. But, but, but we're secret. If we want to meet and violate federal law, the Logan Act, with your elected politicians that we bought and paid for and literally carve up the world... I mean, they had meetings in Turkey, we got some of the minutes of, about how they were going to shut down power plants all over the United States five years ago. And they did it. And they had the big global power company heads there literally deciding what companies weren't part of the inside group to be shut down. All the insiders were given waivers. People outside the insiders had their plants shut down. And you got higher power prices. Oh, see how money's made? It's made by shutting down your competition. That's what Bilderberg's about. Oh, but they're all secret. And undoubtedly, the British cops will be bugging their eyes out at us. How dare you try to come here and cover this criminal meeting? And I'll go, hey, cops, you notice your money doesn't go as far. Hope you enjoy having your pension funds taken. And I'll pull up on an iPad articles about British civil servant pension funds already raided, and I'll go, oh, and the cops, because I, I did this in Virginia last year, the cops go, really? And by the end of it, the cops are patting us on the back going, yes, you're absolutely right, they're criminals. You will figure it out. And it's better to figure it out now before they fully robbed all of us instead of late, uh, later. Now, speaking of that, I have told you, and we've not tooted our horn yet, we ought to dig the articles up, I have told you for over a decade it doesn't matter when Republicans are in office because the bureaucracy uh, is a bunch of collectivists. Most people in government, as you know, are communist or socialist. They don't understand they work for big mega offshore banks. They just know they get their chicken feed. And I have known pastors that have been audited because they criticize any type of socialism or abortion. I have known authors that have been uh, audited and told, you sh I mean, uh, Tex Mars, Back when he was, you know, kind of like a mainline Republican, uh, was writing articles in, about Hillary Clinton and best-selling books like Big Sis is Watching. And they came and audited him and shut him down, basically, and said, hey, you shouldn't talk bad about Clinton. This is back in the late 1990s. And, and, and so many people say, hey, I don't want to mess with the government. I'll get audited. When you act like that, it's over, folks. When you act like that, you have no future. When you get start, start controlling what you say, because the government might come after you, everyone then shuts up and goes along, and then you get a tyranny. Freedom is when you stand up against these people and the illegitimate collection agency for the private Federal Reserve. We didn't even have an income tax till 1913. Most Americans weren't even eligible to pay it till the 1950s. It didn't build the nation. It destroyed the nation. Now, now, now let's go to these articles, because this... People are saying, hey, this could be a distraction uh, from Benghazi Gate, and, and that, that's not what's happening. Benghazi Gate's out there bigger than ever. This is because everybody is sick of going along with this, and people are sick of whistleblowers being arrested. And so this is what happens. You get pushed around, you get pushed around, you get scared, and then after a while you go, you know what, I'm sick of being scared. I'm sick of living like this. I'm going to blow the whistle. And everybody's starting to blow the whistle. Citizens have been blowing the whistle for the last few years about how illegal aliens are allowed to have all the tax ID numbers they want and are given tax benefits and tax refunds that aren't even theirs. Individuals are getting millions a year.
and no one's being prosecuted. Why is that happening? Bankrupt the country. Here it is, Washington Post. You know the system's turning against them. IRS targeting groups that criticize the government. IG report says, but there's also about a chilling effect. They think you're so cowardly that if they simply report this, you'll shut up. Oh, no, they might come after me. Let them come after all of us. Let them put us all on a list. Who, who goes to the prison when we take the country back? Everybody not on the list. Let me just real quick hit this. Document cam, please, and I'll get into the big breaking Bilderberg. IRS targeted groups that criticize the government. Inspector General report says, oh, you really think so? Next, they'll tell me that dolphins live in the ocean and other wild-eyed conspiracy theories. At various points over the past two years, Internal Revenue Service... Officials, they're not servants, they're officials, targeted nonprofit groups that criticized the government and sought to educate Americans about the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> it's like satire. Oh, man, educate about the Constitution? How evil. According to documents in an audit conducted by the agency's inspector general. And by the way, when I tell you we've been harassed around here, I just don't get into it and waste time and do their intimidating forum. But uh, obviously, uh, we've had our little issues with the Federal Reserve's henchmen. Doesn't matter if I hire the biggest CPA group in Austin. Doesn't matter if I've got tax lawyers. Doesn't matter if, even though it's a fraudulent tax, I overpay it. They're constantly trying to make stuff up. And because they've written the tax laws where they can say whatever they want. You know, if you're a big globalist, you pay zero taxes. <laughs> but if you try to actually hire people and build a news organization, well, they rake you over the coals. And it just goes on to admit, this is the Washington Post. Going, oh, yeah, I guess if you talk about the Constitution, the IRS comes after you. Gee, that sounds like a free country, doesn't it? Yeah, folks, they teach the police that Christians are terrorists and that they've got to, quote, prepare to confiscate their guns. And that made the state police a month ago flip out and go public in Colorado. See, they went too far. Imagine FEMA meetings. And uh, the Christians, we may have to confiscate their guns en masse. And the state police were in the local news saying, is this a joke? Are you joking with us? No, 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 no. State police all over the country. You've been federalized and you've signed on now to go after people that are real Americans. So you're either going to follow your orders and be on the wrong side of history, or you're going to do something about it. And that just means say no. Blow the whistle. Speak out. Remember, they had all those sheriffs in Colorado. They're really trying to use Colorado as a test bed, and they said, oh, we're not going to enforce the state law. And so they introduced a bill that said, well, we'll have the Secret Service come in and enforce this and go after sheriffs. And then everybody got upset about that, so they ran headlines saying conspiracy theorists say the Secret Service will go after sheriffs. You mean the bill they're trying to pass in the Colorado State House, sponsored and pushed by the Justice Department? We got foreign governments, foreign corporations, and the federal government, that's a foreign corporation basically now, an occupied group, trying. They've got bills introduced in Texas to guarantee 90% occupancy in private prisons. It's a business. And this could bring them down, ladies and gentlemen. But again, I saw an article going, Obama doesn't care if there's controversy. He doesn't care. That's them trying to act, you know, tough with bravado.
Now, there's the Fox News headline, Colorado Sheriff's Plan Lawsuit Challenging State Gun Control Laws. Oh, really? Well, the Secret Service wear black sunglasses and suits. Aren't you scared of 007 sheriffs? It's all a facade of crooks. They've committed so many crimes in the federal government, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they're so dangerous, because they're going to go for it all. Because they either all go to prison or they take over. You understand, this is committed. This is This is like... Uh, when you get in a fight in a parking lot or something, you're not looking for it, but the guy's looking for it and he punches you upside the head. You're in a fight, folks, okay? And getting in a fetal position and sticking your thumb in your mouth and the other thumb somewhere else is not, and I guess that could be the new national sign, actually. <laughs> One thumb here and the other. Yeah. I mean, look, that is not going to deliver you to Valhalla. So I'm going to cover this more in the next hour with Catherine Albrecht. Obamacare taxpayers must report personal health info to IRS. Oh, now, remember, they denied death panels. They denied IRS. It's all in the bill. And now they're saying, yeah, we're going to pass your health, care, health records around whoever wants them. And it turns out in the campaign, tax info was illegally used against candidates, especially Tea Party libertarians all over America. Gee, the White House run media matters. Who isn't pertinent and doesn't have an audience, but, but, but it's important because it is admittedly written by the White House. That's White House talking points. They say, let's break in to alternative media and destroy it. They think you're so dumb, they publicly parade around talking about espionage. They're listening to me right now. They publicly engage in espionage against the free press of this republic. They're in the Washington Post going, yeah, we target people uh, that talk about the Constitution. The Constitution is America. The Constitution is the Republic. The Constitution binds down the government. Declaration of Independence, demonized by FEMA. Bill of Rights, Constitution, all of it. These people are the enemy, ladies and gentlemen. Do they need to wear foreign uniforms before you figure that out? It's not rhetoric when I say they're spying on you. It's not rhetoric when I say they're persecuting people. It's not rhetoric. The best place to get the coverage on IRS gate, on enemies list gate, is drudgereport.com. Let's punch it up. A new enemies list. That's the uh, top uh, headline. IRS begins targeting conservatives in March of 010. That's what the inspector general says. Uh, try 30 years ago. Probe expands to groups opposed to government teaching constitution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, don't have groups teaching that. Uh, security scrutiny deeper than thought. Kept shifting targets. Agency accused of leaking confidential tax documents during election. You could, they, they did it publicly. Flashback, Romney donor vilified by Obama campaign. Then subjected to two audits. And then they've got Democrats bragging and defending it, saying it's a good idea, and statements they've made about how they need to use the IRS on it. Hell, I just remembered saying that, and we're going to Paul Watson with the biggest report ever. I just remembered they have talked about uh, on MSNBC when I've seen them uh, using the IRS against uh, Tea Party groups and, and how it's wrong that they're tax-exempt and, and, and promoting their political view. How about the Constitution, you punks? I mean, look, it's just like Fast and Furious. They bragged about Fast and Furious two years before it broke and then said they never had the press conferences where they all admitted to the program. That's how dumb they think you are. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the administration is going down unless they stage a terror attack. Rand Paul declares Obama is working with anti-American globalists to basically overthrow America. Yes, 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 yes. That is what is going to beat them, the truth. Their attack is so outrageous, so over the top. We're going to Catherine Albert at about 15 after, let her know. Keeping Watson until then. Their attack is so naked, so brazen, so out in the open that people don't respond to it properly because it's, it's hard to believe it's happening. And they're like, oh, he's discredited. No, he's not discredited. His star politically is shooting up like a rocket because he's telling it like it is. Same thing, Ted Cruz. And they go, oh, Ted Cruz is discrediting conservatives and libertarians. No, he's not. He's energizing them.
Whatever they tell you is discrediting, that's what you've got to go with. Oh, don't be associated with Alex Jones. That guy's discredited. Oh, yeah, I'm real discredited. There's also an article on DrudgeReport.com about a giant drill uh, they're doing at an amusement park, FEMA, for martial law. And there's another article Drudge was linked to from InfoWars.com dealing with more drills training where tea partiers and parents and uh, homeschoolers are going to attack public schools. How do you demonize a group? Well, you just go train the police. They're bad. So that's all coming up. We're going to look at how they use your data. And, and why is Google at the heart of Bilderberg, the shadow corporate, illegal, crony capitalist, anti-free market group? Why are they at the heart of it? I'll tell you why they're at the heart of it. Because they are the unofficial NSA where they're getting people to opt in to waiving their rights and being spied on. But even when you have the privacy settings and tell Google no, it's on record hacking into everybody's computer and stealing all your data. Photos, passwords, mobile cars driving around. They're NSA vehicles, really. Globalist, private, corporate, NSA, fraudulent, felony, every millisecond committing systems worldwide. On record, driving around with back doors built into Apple, built into Microsoft, built into everything but some of the other systems like Linux. And they're going around jacking and stealing everything and then they don't get in trouble for it. But see, oh, it's don't be evil, a cute little Google. And Google has, you know, hippies working there and, and metrosexual trendies and, and, and they've got ping pong and they've got foosball and they've got video games. And they're always, they've got movies coming out with comedians about how Google's friendly and they drink beer and have fun and oh, they're sweetie pies. All to be non-threatening, that's their uniform, while they're really the technocrats able to predict what mass movements are going to do. And that's why now punching it up on screen for TV viewers, every radio listener has got to go to Infowars.com and get this article out to everyone they know. Because when we get news this big, we don't ever tend to really hype it up like we should. And if you don't hype something up, nobody pays attention to it. This is big. Our sources for years, and we've gone to Switzerland and confirmed it, and some of it's come out at Davos, it's come out in the news, that Google was more and more of being uh, absorbing Bilderberg, and that the old robber baron technocrats, David Rockefeller, the big Brzezinski, the CFR, were passing things on to the technocrats and people like Eric Schmidt. And if you go to InfoWars.com, we have photos, we have video from there at the Grove Resort and Hotel where they ran major OSS operations in World War II, you name it, where Bilderberg four years ago, three years ago, every year plans Arab Springs and revolutions. They need people power. So they are creating the system to track, control, surveil you, and know your dreams to then see trends and pre-program you. All packaged as if it's non-threatening and trendy because, look, Warren Buffett's got an ice cream cone. And, look, Google's drinking beer. And they've got guys with metrosexual, you know, rainbow socks on. So, but being behind closed doors, folks, they're, they're globalist operatives saluting in military formation. That's our intel from inside Microsoft, from inside Google, inside all of it. These are military operations. I mean, I know people that have been in the meetings there are top generals in there, cybersecurity, all of it. This is unbelievable. And I told Watson three weeks ago, I said, you've got to get there because they're already setting up. And he was visiting family in France for a couple of weeks, working from France. And then he got back and he finally got there. And it was the mother load of the employees, managers, because they it's all hiding in plain view. The public is in such a trance. They don't see guard shacks being set up and checkpoints. And they're just like, oh, yes, we staged the Arab Spring here. We're bringing in global government. We have recordings of this. Oh, yes, uh, Google runs Bilderberg, and we're so important. The mayors and the news going, oh, I'm so glad Bilderberg's coming here. We're so prestigious. Oh, protesters are so evil. Paul Watson, this segment, next segment for 15 minutes the next hour, you've got the floor as we expose this. I know you've got part two tomorrow, but we've got the agenda, everything, and this is confirming what our sources told us. 
really three years ago, two years ago, a year ago, and three weeks ago. And, and I'm so glad you got over there to report on this in the photos and video or up on Infowars.com. I know I'm ranting here, but I mean, look at look at look at the IRS with our health records now and spying on people. And, and imagine Google makes them, you know, look like look like babies. Uh, look like amoebas compared to a T-Rex in the damage they can do. Paul Watson. Well, that's right, Alex. I mean, Google really is setting itself up as, you know, the B system. And we went to the Grove Hotel in Hertfordshire on Friday expecting to dig up some dirt about Bilderberg. We actually ended up uncovering an even bigger story, which is the fact, as you said, Bilderberg, along with other high-profile networks, are being merged into Google. And in fact, we discovered that the Google Zeitgeist Conference, which has been described by the London Independent as a cuddlier version of the Bilderberg Group, is taking place um, in about a week's time, I think it begins, at the same location as Bilderberg does uh, just 10 days after. And again, there's and that fact, meme. There's that meme. It's cuddly. They're breaking into your computers. It's run by by the Pentagon and, and Northcom and, and foreign governments. We've got your medical records. We're going to use them. We're going to steal your bank accounts, too. We want to know where all your money's at. NSA admits they're spying on us without warrants through Google. But it's, it's cuddly, Paul. Well, here's the fact. I mean, Schmidt was obviously a major donor to Obama's political campaigns. They actually offered him the position of Treasury Secretary. He turned it down. He was a major advisor to Obama's political campaign. And in Britain, Google representatives have met with the current conservative government 23 times since 2010. So both in America and in Britain, the Google government relationship is cozier than ever. And in fact, David Cameron, four years before he became prime minister, addressed the Google Zeitgeist Conference in 2006. Chancellor George Osborne visited and gave a speech at Google Zeitgeist in 2011. Two weeks later, he was in Switzerland at the Bilderberg Conference in San Moritz. So the crossover is clear. Bill Clinton, a major Google Zeitgeist speaker, of course, he was at the 91 Bilderberg meeting. Uh, they groomed him before he became president. And just it goes on and on. Prince Charles, the memberships at the top are basically the same. So this is why we say Bilderberg is being merged into Google. That's why we coined the term Googleberg. Um, and it's it's all part of this technocratic revolution that Eric Schmidt brags about at these Google Zeitgeist conferences. And they also brag that they're going to have web IDs and taxes selectively enforced to shut down their competition and ban people off the web that are troublemakers. And, and, and Paul, again... Our sources, and we confirmed this in Switzerland, we confirmed this last year, more and more the old attendees are dying or leaving, and it is Google, it is Facebook, it is uh, Apple. And now from our sources, they said go there. They're, basically, it's a mega Bilderberg meeting, meetings before, during, and after, and they're passing the torch to Google. This is, this is a big deal, and now you were able to confirm from our source uh, what's on the agenda, uh, and, and, and we also index that with some WikiLeaks information. I mean, this is big. Well, exactly. We've got the agenda, and we've also got reports like the one out of the London Telegraph, which described Google Zeitgeist as, quote, one of the most high-powered gatherings of business leaders, thinkers, and those that are considered to generally shape the global future. Another report compared it to the Davos Economic Forum, which just happened in January, so this is a major, major conference. It's almost exactly the same as Bilderberg. It's closed to the public. The hotel has to organize with state security to protect the function. The public aren't allowed anywhere near it. And yet, hardly anybody knows about it. People have started to lift the veil from Bilderberg, which is probably why they're trying to merge it into these, as you said, um, you know, trendy metrosexual groups. I called it the rebranding of authoritarian anti-democratic power networks into trendy philanthropic style forums because that's exactly what it is if you go and watch the google zeitgeist speeches there's a youtube channel where they release what they want to put out there it's basically eric schmidt saying look we know people are constantly glued to their smartphones 
Uh, but that's not enough. I mean, even though all the studies show it's making people desperately unhappy, it's literally re rewiring their brains. He says that's not enough, and he wants a complete transhumanist future where, forget Google Glass, there's going to be a Google chip implanted in your brain. He wants cars that drive themselves, obviously tracking your every movement. Oh, yeah, this gives them Google this gives them place. total control. And, 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 and tell folks the photos you and others took, I've got them on screen for TV viewers, of the transhumanist dead body being taken over by the robot. And the message of the sculpture is that the old human is dead, and then the machine rewires as it kills humanity. This is the technocratic plan, and this is where they like to meet. I mean, this is unbelievable, all the videos and photos you've got. Uh, in your report at infowars.com well it's the hotel is surrounded by a vast sprawling estate 300 acres an 18 hole golf course and these beautiful gardens but they're full of these weird statues as he mentioned one is a half human half skeleton crawling out of a pond there are other kind of transhumanist statues in that garden and just the whole place is very strange to say the least it's extremely ornate and beautiful um inside we managed to get a look at some of the conference rooms actually in the major conference room in the hotel you could see they were rigging up something in the roof they were obviously setting it up for a major conference which is probably the google zeitgeist but <clears throat> the one of the hotel managers actually told us that they've got four or five major conferences coming up in may june and july One's Google, one's Bilderberg. We don't know what the others are. But this seems to be a central hub for the elite's agenda in Britain. It's literally about a 15-minute drive from Heathrow Airport. So they The word we got is that, is that, look at this, it's bigger than Bilderberg. There's a merger and that they're basically permanently moving into that area because it's surrounded by uh, the old OSS MI6 command bases uh, in the area. Basically, that entire area is, has been a globalist command base all along. Yeah, in fact, on their own website, they brag about how people have been eating and mating there for 9,000 years. So it's obviously a very sacred place for them. And it's it's a routine haunt of, haunt of celebrities and global elitists. In fact, it's it's renowned as a place where celebrities and politicians go to not be bothered in fact, when we went there, the entire Manchester City football team was staying the night before the FA Cup final, which is Britain's version of the Super Bowl for soccer. So rich, very rich people. I mean, the presidential suite is £1,000 a night. That's, you know, $1,700 a night. Um, it's, it's a major sprawling complex. It's completely different to Chantilly or San Moritz, which were relatively small in comparison. And the access is basically terrible in terms of, of a protester from the viewpoint of a protester because there's two long driveways driveways on both the front and back entrances and it's very difficult to not only get near the hotel but there are few areas to stand around it as they there was in san moritz there was a huge embankment which you could get 300 protesters on looks like we're just going to have to stand along the side of the road it's not going to be great in terms of congregation uh, but that's why they've chosen this venue, because of its remoteness and because of the the terrible access for anybody who tries to get near it to protest. Now, now, Paul, that's the difference between half empty, half full. I agree with you, but that actually makes it better because you've only got two entrances. The back entrance is the shorter one. We'll, we'll be able to station reporters on both ends of that. And then that makes it harder uh, for them to get past us without us getting video. We've also got to get the uh, red filters for all the cameras, folks, so you can shoot through the tent uh, or your cameras won't won't catch them. But if you put a red filter uh, over your camera, you will uh, have them. Just a little tip to all the demonstrators and people. And I've never seen such pre-demonization uh, uh, by the mayor, uh, this woman, saying, oh, they're so royal, we're so lucky to have them coming here, but the rabble undoubtedly will be violent. Scum protesters. I mean, I can't believe she's in the. Plus, I thought Bilderberg didn't exist. Usually, they just say, "Oh, there's insane people imagining the helicopters landing and the uh, the troops. There's insane schizophrenics have come to town." But instead, she's like this rabble. Oh, I'm so glad. To and thank God we're elite enough to have them, though. I'm so honored. I'm sorry, Paul. I'm shifting into my Englishness for a moment. <laughs> well. 
I mean, she's come out and basically demonised the protesters as being violent. There's never been a violent incident at a Bilderberg protest. There was some weird thing in Switzerland where they tried to frame up some people for a bomb threat, which turned out to be nonsense. Now, that but was staged. That, that was staged by their people, yeah. That was an excuse to move everybody back. And they'll do that here, too. It's for your safety. Get back there, mate. I'll have to arrest you, have you deported. We're protecting criminals inside, busy stealing our pension funds and overrunning the country with third world populations. Now get back, you Yankee scum. <laughs> I'll have to show you a little bit of... The power of the Royal Guard Brigade. And a delicious Scotch to quaff it down and deal with the troublemaker. Look at that pumpkin-headed yank. That's the one, Alex Jones. I want you to know, young man, we'll be watching you continually while we protect the transhumanists putting cancer viruses in our children's shots. Hi, Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Sources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is, we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will make you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping, with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at Infowars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson the trusted name in precious metals. All right, Catherine Albrecht uh, is going to be with us about 10 or 15 after Paul Watson is with us, breaking undoubtedly what is some of the biggest Bilderberg news ever. Google is merging with it. I mean, we know they've been merging, but now... They're officially merging it with a total surveillance grid. They're demonizing demonstrators. Here's the Watford Observer. For the, and for new listeners, the Bilderberg Group is one of the top globalist crime syndicate meeting places where they buy and sell our politicians in violation of federal law. The Grove Hotel, set to host Bilderberg outside Lum London, one of the most elite hotels in the world, Watson went and stayed there Friday night. And she talks about how, I'm worried about violence. These protesters are always violent. 
But she goes, I'm, I, I feel lucky that we're elitist enough to have them. I'm concerned about the use of police resources, but it's good. The Grove has been deemed a prestigious enough venue. Oh, so, we, so they've gone from Bilderberg not existing to it's prestigious enough. Perhaps I can chew on the, on the, uh, on the skin growths of David Rockefeller's big toe. Remember, the mayor probably wants to suck on David Rockefeller's toes. I'm, I'm sorry, folks. A little humor. I'm sorry. Let's go back to Paul Watson. Paul, I cannot say how big this is. I mean, we've got their agenda early. Our sources have been confirmed. It's a giant Google nest. You said you saw them uh, you know, setting up guard nest, and uh, they talked a lot to you the first day. You got a lot of intel. Then they obviously had it under surveillance and freaked out the next day. Uh, you've got a lot of this recorded, too, if anybody doubts it. Well, yeah, isn't it ironic that the Watford mayor is talking about violence when the president of the Supreme Court of Italy and the guy who investigated the assassination attempt on the Pope came out a few weeks ago and said the Bilderberg Group is involved in terrorist attacks in Gladio. I've got the evidence. Watford observers not talking about that, are they? They're talking about non-existent violence from peaceful protests. Shut your mouth, rebel! You will kneel to the queen now and groom the stool. <laughs> Why um, don't you beg to groom the queen's stool? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't hey. Google that, by the way, if you're eating your dinner at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, the, the other thing, obviously, is when we talk to this hotel manager, he bragged about the fact that Google recruited and met and planned with these same people who worked for Google. One of them was called Wael Gonim, who started the phony contrived color revolutions, the Arab Spring in Tunisia and Egypt. So this is the central hub where they plan all their social media manipulations and these phony revolutions around the globe. And they're, they're quite happy to brag about it, apparently. Well, let's not forget, too, I got thrown a day early out of the Bilderberg Hotel in Virginia last year. And uh, it doesn't matter, though, because we've got so many great auxiliary reporters uh, that, uh, that you've been working with for years there uh, that uh, they're not going to stop us getting the information out. And, and again, if they try to block me coming into England, it only makes it a bigger story. I actually hope I get to come see you, hang out, see all the folks. I know people want me to go speak at one of these events they're having, one of the satellite events to it. Uh, but... Uh, you know, we win either way. The only way we lose, Paul, is by not engaging these people. Well, exactly, which is why we need uh, as many people out there as possible. But we've also got some of the leaked agenda that they're going to be talking about, uh, which focuses mainly on Iran and Syria, obviously. They're talking about airstrikes on Iran's nuclear facilities within three years if Tehran doesn't give up its nuclear program. They're also... Obviously, talking about arming the Syrian. Tell you what, stay there. The Come back. I'm gonna give you the floor for five minutes, and we're gonna gather all we're done. Break down what we intel we've got on the agenda. All right, folks, Catherine Albrecht's going to be joining us, expert on Google and government spying, and tying it all into the IRS enemies list gate, where the Washington Post is being forced to report. Yes, it's true. Inspector General report: the IRS was ordered to quote target people that promote the Constitution. That is the essence of treason. To, to attack the Constitution is the lawful framework of government. So if you promote the law, you promote justice, you're targeted. Sounds like the devil, if the devil was in control. I want you to target people that support the rule of law and justice. Get them. Get them now. Drive them into submission. This is the twilight zone level of garbage we deal with. Paul Watson has broken. I asked him three weeks ago to get down there. He got down there this weekend. Our sources years ago, and we confirmed it in Switzerland and St. Moritz, said, look, they've already merged with Google. It's going to be public soon. They're going to transform themselves into this technocracy. They're going to sell it as if it's trendy. And they're just going to hide this new system in plain view. They're going to tax the web, control it. Uh, this is the future. We sent Paul and another reporter in. I'm not going to even name all the reporters because I don't want them getting uh, you know, identified and shut down when we try to go back into the hotel. And outside London, probably one of the most expensive and elitist hotels in the world, the Grove, 
They are having the Google meetings before and after and during Bilderberg. So it's totally uh, transforming itself into Googleberg. And this is private corporate interest setting the agenda and running our governments. They're the ones that control the central banks. They're the ones calling for a, a 100 trillion every decade in new taxes paid in carbon taxes to them. They're the people trying to organize and run your life. They're the ones that want to reduce population numbers. We've got articles on that today. Paul Watson, tell us what we learned from our sources in the inside the Grove, but also outside, confirming in just triplicate the intel we had and documents we have. Tell people what's in the report up at Infowars.com on Googleberg and where all this is going. Well, first off, um, the actual it's not that snobby inside the hotel. The actual staff are really friendly, so I'm guessing when Bilderberg members are rude to them, which they habitually are, then they'll want to, you know, come back to us and maybe tell us about it. But we got on well with all the staff. They were really nice. So it's not as snobby as you'd imagine. But with regard to Google and Bilderberg, there's two terms that they're throwing around right now, which they'll be, they'll be throwing around at the Bilderberg conference. One is cyber resilience, which means cyber security which means more state control over the internet. Of course, all the major cyber attacks have been launched by the US and Israel and then used as a reason for cyber security legislation, even though they're behind the attacks. Another one they're talking about is, quote, digital wildfires. They're scared stiff about losing control over the flow of information. And they're actually talking about setting up a ministry of truth for the internet, which was the same thing advocated by Bill Clinton, um, Bilderberg and Google's Zeitgeist member back in 2011. So they want an organization that vets what can be published on the internet as news as part of this agenda to stomp out the quote digital wildfire. And by the way, Google delisted us from Google News, what, four years ago? So, uh, and they've done all sorts of stuff to try to delist us. They're now trying to say that uh, our sites can't be, you know, visited. They're not safe when it turns out it's Google software doing it. I mean, these people are simply amazing, and they're, they want to be the Internet. They want to decide. That's their answer to the, to the people's revolution of information is total control. It is outrageous. All of the press should be there. And if the press isn't there or the press doesn't cover this, then they're part of the problem. I mean, this is so outrageous to have these technocrats meeting with government, trying to take over the web and dominate it, and, and Google has committed so many crimes. It's incredible, Paul. Yeah, and then the media comes out and says, oh, it's just a talking shot. Well, that's not correct because the former NATO Secretary General, Willie Clace, admitted in 2010 that Bilderberg attendees discuss and come to a consensus and then they're told to implement those decisions in their relative spheres of influence. So they go there, they agree what they're going to do, and then they implement it. And he admitted that in 2010, and he was a member. Uh, also, of course, Etienne Davignon bragged about how the euro single currency was a brainchild of Bilderberg. In fact, documents going back as far as 1955 confirmed that not only the EU, but the single currency itself, which wasn't even introduced until 92 as an idea, formally introduced in banknotes and coins in 2002, they were talking about it in 1955, a year after they first met. So don't tell me that they don't have power and influence and that they don't implement it because we've got numerous examples where they do and we've documented them. You're absolutely right, Watson. Uh, wow. Now, as soon as you leave us here in a few minutes, we're getting Catherine Albrecht on. But anything else uh, you'd like to point out that's in this big report with videos, photos, uh, this is a major investigative report. You should probably just add a note at the top. By the way, this is culminates years of investigative researching and reporting. Because I don't want people to just think, oh, it's another article. This is groundbreaking. This is the technocratic group that wants to control and dominate our future. Horrible authoritarians trying to pose as non-threatening liberals when they're anything but uh, and, 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 and I know you've got more parts coming out in the next few days, but it's time to really call on everybody worldwide to travel there to peacefully protest and to outnumber the provocateurs and to really, uh, by the way, there's never been violence, but if, they, if something happens, you know it's staged the way this mayor is talking. I mean, this is really creepy. Well, exactly. And I mean, 
there are several more videos to come. We've got walkthroughs of the hotel, we've got more videos of the outside. But with regard to the agenda, um, they're probably going to talk about the revolution of 3D printing and, again, ways to control it after the shutdown of Defence Distributed just a few days ago because they don't want that democratisation of production. They don't want people printing off their own weapons, their own tools. They're going to talk about the threat of a global pandemic caused in part by rising resistance to antibiotics. But, you know, given the role of pharmaceutical corporations like Baxter and others, which are represented at Bilderberg, you're talking about a global pandemic, then they're going to be the first suspects because they routinely accidentally release viruses in labs, then try and send them out all over the world and it gets buried, it gets hushed up. So they're talking about global pandemic. They're talking about bombing Iran's nuclear facilities within the next three years. Kissinger is pushing for that. And then you remember in 2011, before the fall of Gaddafi, Bilderberg gave the final green light to go into Tripoli with the al-Qaeda terrorists they were supporting and getting that done. It happened three months after Bilderberg 2011. So they're obviously going to talk about arming the Syrian rebels and trying to topple Bashar al-Assad in Syria because the Syrian military has been winning major battles in the past few weeks and it looks like the tide is going against the FSA Obama-backed terrorists. So they're going to well, talk about What do about you make Syria. of this headline? This is out of the London Telegraph. Under the black flag of al-Qaeda, the Syrian city ruled by gangs of extremists and admits our government and others put al-Qaeda in charge. Uh, and again, it was Google helped fund and run the Arab Spring from this very hotel that they use as a command base. Paul Watson, we're going to get you back on tomorrow with part two of the report. This is a groundbreaking report, listeners. Please get it out to everyone. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.